So how's your vacation? That was great. I wish I was still on the lake. <laughs> now let's get out there before it gets too hot. Yeah. This is supposed to be a scorcher today. Heat stress and heat-related illnesses can cause more than just discomfort. If they're not treated early enough, they can lead to hospitalization or even death. In this program, we'll give you an overview of how the body regulates heat and show you the warning signs when these processes aren't working. We'll show you the environments where heat might affect you the most. We'll look at symptoms of heat-related illnesses and what to do if you or someone you're working with shows symptoms of heat stress or is overcome by heat. Inside your body, there are many different mechanisms to make sure that your internal temperature stays at or near 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. In extreme temperatures, your body has to work harder to heat or cool itself to stay comfortable. When trying to stay cool in the heat, the first thing your body will do is send more blood towards the surface of the skin. By increasing blood flow towards the surface, the body can cool the blood and then send it back inside where it will help keep you cool internally. This is why your skin may look flushed when you've been working in high temperatures. If the increasing blood flow isn't enough to keep you cool, your second line of defense are your sweat glands. As the perspiration evaporates from your skin, it cools your body. This is why a fan or a cool breeze on a hot day feels so good. But sometimes these internal mechanisms may not be able to keep your body cool. Higher temperatures mixed with increased physical activity can make it hard for your body to cool itself efficiently. That's when heat-related illnesses strike. You might assume that heat-related illnesses only affect people who work outdoors, in direct sunlight, during hot summer months but heat can be a problem in both indoor and outdoor work environments. Below 91 degrees Fahrenheit, or 32 degrees Celsius, most people can work comfortably and safely. But as the temperatures rise, it is important to be on the lookout for signs and symptoms of heat-related illnesses in yourself and your coworkers. Another way heat-related illnesses can sneak up on you is when you're new to working in hot environments or have taken a break for longer than four days. Your body needs time to adjust to higher temperatures, especially when you are doing more strenuous work. Acclimation is your body's process of learning how to properly cool itself in hotter than normal conditions. What, are you still on vacation? I'm just easing into things, man. <sighs> you know, the faster we do this, the faster we get it done. Well, you'll be getting it done by yourself if I don't take it easy. Thought I already was. By giving yourself time to acclimate to the heat, you'll feel better hey. and be able to work more productively. During the acclimation period, make sure you are paying close attention to the signs of heat-related illnesses, drinking plenty of water, and taking small breaks as needed. Some heat-related illnesses might not seem serious, but they can lead to worse problems down the road. Take a look at these blisters on Eddie. This is a sign of heat rash. Heat rash, or prickly heat, occurs when sweat begins to clog your sweat glands. This also limits your ability to sweat, making it harder for your body to cool itself, leaving you susceptible to more serious heat-related illnesses. If Eddie was paying attention, he would know that heat rash means it's time to take a break and cool off. In most cases, this is all you need to do to clear up a mild heat rash. Unfortunately, it looks like Eddie is trying to power through it, and that could be a mistake.